What do you want to do with your life? Who do you really want to be? I sit down with author Ken Linder with the number one best-selling book, Aspire Higher, to get you on track for 2022. Hi, Ken. It's so good to see you. Hi, Shali. It's a pleasure to be with you and everyone who's watching. You know, I tell you, you couldn't have come in and swooped into my life at a better time. <laughs> We're right at the be beginning of the year where myself, along with a lot of people, we're trying to like realign our goals, coming out of a very, very difficult few years. And all of a sudden, this magical book, Aspire Higher, lands on my lap, and I'm in love, Ken. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, love is a great thing. In fact, we'll talk about it later. But self-love is the answer to everything, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, and I want to know why it's so hard for all of us to attain that. But let's dive into this book. It's called Aspire Higher. You wrote it, uh, How to Find Love, Positivity, Purpose to Elevate Your Life and the World. Why did you write this? Well, you know, Shali, we're all subjected to so much demoralizing negativity right now. I truly believe that we all can use a powerful and positive emotional and psychological jumpstart to our lives in the new year. So I wrote Aspire Higher to give everyone the clear and actionable steps to make positive life choices that reflect your highest self, your highest values, and your highest goals. And when you make these empowering life choices, you instill positivity and peace and confidence and love and highest life purpose in your heart. And you're motivated to live your very, very best and highest life. This is the number one best-selling new self-help book in the country. And you talk about these choices, uh, Ken. I can think of a few instances in my life right now where I am watching people make not very good life choices. And I'm standing back and I'm, going, you decided to do that? You know, like, do you realize that's changing your, your life? Why is, it, why is it so important, these life choices we make, and why is it so difficult to sometimes make that right choice, even though you're up here, your brain's telling you this is the right thing to do, but you end up deciding to do something else? Well, that's a great question. You know, first of all, our choices are our gifts. There are golden paths, our vehicles to elevate our lives. Our choices are like train tracks. Trains go where the tracks take them. Our lives in large part are a direct reflection of the good and the bad choices that we make. So the key is starting today, put your life on an amazing track by making life choices that are positive that are constructive, that are big picture, and reflect what you really want for yourself. So, Shali, to answer your question more specifically, first of all, it's really important for us to know what we really want in our lives, not what our teachers want for us, not what our employers want for us, not what our partners or spouses want for us, there are choices in our lives, and we need to make choices that reflect our authenticity. It's so important because then you know what you want, and you can make the choices and take the steps to get there. But how can you be a great life choice maker if you don't really take time to know what you want? So first of all, you must know what you want. The second thing is you don't want to make choices when your best judgment is dismantled, or as they say, hijacked by your emotions. Ooh, is, when you're angry, yes. when you're sad, right? Yes. When you're enraged, when you feel disrespected, when you feel frustrated, when you feel needy, when you feel desperate. Which is all tend to, right now, Ken. Isn't it all the time for so many people? People it are is frustrated, enraged, they feel hopeless, they're angry, there's all these feelings that are coming up, and you're saying you can't make life choices if you're in that state. 
You can't make good life choices. You can make impulsive ones and you can make bad ones. And that's what happens. And you know, with COVID and everything going on right now, all of those emotions are ramped up. I mean, they are, they are with us because we feel demoralized. We feel emotionally and psychologically stuck because we don't see a way up or a way out. So we have to be really cognizant of the fact that our emotions can really wreak havoc with our decision making. So in Aspire Higher, I spend a whole chapter on how to, in essence, make your emotions work for you, how to get your emotions to um, lead you to make positive choices, not negative ones. But some of the things I can tell um, your viewers is that don't make life choices when you are angry, sad, hurt, whatever that emotion. Because oftentimes we impulsively act, we push the send button, we say something that we regret later. We've all done it. It's, it's, it's part of life, right? Yes, I, 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 but I wanna ask, like, what do you do during that? Let's say you're angry, let's say you're hurt, let's say you're upset. Are you saying just stay quiet, give it a week, give it two weeks? Well, a lot of times you don't have that kind of time, mm -hmm. but there are some things that you can do. First of all, take a walk, clear your mind, take a bike ride, do something that makes you feel good, listen to music, think about your blessings, the things that you do have in your life, not what you don't. Mm -hmm. Think about the people you love, the animals, the dogs, the cats that you love. Think about something that puts a smile on your face and a smile in your heart. What you want to do is calm down, clear your mind, and relax. Whatever that is that centers you. And then go back and think about, one, what do you really want in your life? And how do I want to conduct myself? And what you want to do is make a life choice that reflects those goals and how you want to act. Because if you make great life choices that make you feel good about yourself and the way you've conducted your life and the outcome that you were able to secure, you start to gain confidence. You start to say, I can do this and I can do this over and over again. And you start to feel like you deserve the better life that you're crafting for yourself. You begin to feel worthy of that life choice. And as we'll talk about later, at some point in that continuum, as you continue to make positive life choices, you start to feel all empowering self-love. And if you love yourself, you're going to make choices that reflect that love. The fact that you want a better life, the fact that you want to be healthier, the fact that you want better relationships, all of those things. So we'll get to that. But to sum up, Shali, what you want to make sure is, one, you know what you really want with each life choice that you make. You want to know what you want to secure from the interaction. Mm -hmm. Two, make sure that you're cognitively clear when you make that choice. So you put yourself in the best position to make a great choice. And if you feel like you're angry, sad, hurt, frustrated, and you're feeling any of those emotions, step away, take time out, and relax until you're ready to make a great choice. And when you talk about choices, maybe you don't have to make a big choice all right off the bat. Maybe start with a little one. Is that what you say? Start with a small one and then do bigger? Work? Yes. You know, in Aspire Higher, I talk about this. It's so important not to take on too much too quickly. Start with baby steps. Start with small choices. Once actually you know you can make. Secure those victories. Get that ownership. Feel like you can take ownership of your choices and the things you can control and affect positive change in your life. Once you feel that, you'll begin to make more and more positive life choices because you know you can do it. It's interesting, years and years and years ago, I was watching uh, a golf match uh, actually a golf tournament 
and Tiger Woods in his heyday was going into the final round of this tournament, trailing the leader by five strokes. In the last round, he came back and won the tournament by one stroke. And when the commentator asked him, Tiger, what were you thinking when you went into the final round being down five strokes? And how did you come back to win? Tiger calmly and succinctly said, I knew I could do it. I've done it before. And that's what you want. You want to say, I know I can make great life choices. I know I can make um, a really good path for my life here with my choices because I've done it before. I know how to do it. And I love the results. So repetition, small ones first, then take on the bigger life choices once you get those victories, the small victories. And more on that, when you talk about those life choices, you make them when you do achieve it, you say celebrate them, recognize them, savor them. Is that what you say? Absolutely. And the reason why is what you want to do, as you said, Shali, savor them, celebrate them, acknowledge that you did it right because it makes you feel good. And when it makes you feel good, it's very, very sort of B.S. Skinner-ish, but it's positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. It is you are reinforcing something you did well. And we love to do things that we do well over and over again. So the thing is, is that if you savor them, once again, you begin to get confidence, you begin to get feelings or develop feelings of high self-esteem and self-worth because you know you can affect positive change in your life. And then you develop at some point, as I said, self-love. And again, when you love yourself, that's the key to everything because then you'll make life choices that reflect that love for yourself, the love for your well-being, your health, your relationships. And the other part of it, of loving yourself and having a heart filled with love and high self-esteem and feelings of high self-worth and a high self-image, mm -hmm. is that you're far more likely to bestow love and kindness and civility and all sorts of great things unto others. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is what I call the aspire higher triple bonus because through making positive life choices that instill self-love in your heart and in your psyche, you, one, elevate yourself, two, you're motivated to love and be kind and collaborative with others, and three, together we begin to elevate our country because if we're all making positive life choices with hearts filled with love, we're going to have a much better, much more respect-filled, love-filled, unified country. And how great is that? Boy, can we use that. Oh, can you imagine this world, Ken? Could you imagine this world like that? You know, there's a, there's a quote that I often uh, lean on, and just so that I understand sometimes the choices that people make around me, is that hurt people hurt people. And when you do come, like you say, from a place where you love yourself and you have this love here that it shines, it's very contagious to many, many people around. And when you love yourself, you love others. Right. You have the love to give others. Yeah. So that's the key. And, you know, Charlie, I've, I've read so many self-help people who say, be happy, <laughs> smile. <laughs> and you know what? That's all great for the moment. Right. But when you have a situation which cuts you to the core, when somebody criticizes you, when you feel unloved or unvalued, um, you know, just that's, you know, without having a foundation of self-love, of high self-esteem, of high self-worth, you're going to fall like a house of cards and you're going to go back to the same destructive scripts that you um, acted out before. What Aspire Hire talks about is building a foundation of making positive life choices, which elevate your feelings of self-esteem, which elevate your feelings 
of self-worth and your self-image. And then when rough things happen, when you have a setback, you hit a detour, something unexpected and unwanted comes your way. You have the strength to say, okay, how do I weather the storm by being the most constructive decision maker possible? And to use the old cliche, it allows you to make lemonade from lemons mm -hmm. because you're thinking clearly and you value yourself. You're not going to go down the tubes with a negativity bias or, or your emotions. You're going to aspire higher. So the key is we develop our foundation through the life choices that we make that build all those great feelings within us. You speaking right to my heart, Mr. Ken Linder. And I'm oh, sure, Charlie, I'm so glad. Sure, for, for many people as well. Uh, and, I, and I get what you're saying. I'm going through some of that stuff right now in my life. So this book couldn't have come into my life at a more perfect time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for sending me the book. I'm going to sit down and read this in between my four kids and figure some stuff out. If anybody wants to get their hands on a copy of Aspire Hire, how do they do it? Well, they can find it on my website, Positive Life Choice Psychology, or uh, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, target.com, uh, walmart.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Congratulations on the book. I love that oh. you're doing this. How to find love, positivity, and purpose to elevate your life in the world. People read it. We need it. This world needs it. Thank you, Ken. Oh, thanks, Shali. It's a pleasure to be with you and with everyone out there. Likewise, have a good day. Okay, you too. You've been listening to It Is What It Is with Shali Zomorodi. You can join in and ask your questions live on Shali's Facebook or Instagram page. You can find so much more by following Shali on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and by visiting shaldi.com.